Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Kingdom Cast. Last week we ended our uh, first season, and this week we're starting a new season. So we're glad you're here to watch this season. Yes. In this episode, we're going to be talking about God's loving kindness. Uh, Dad, could you just kind of tell them what I mean by loving kindness? Sure. Just to kind of give a recap, uh, last week we finished up our series on uh, spiritual conditions that Jesus saves from and heals from. Uh, we talked about the blind, yes. the deaf, the lame, the demon-possessed, and the dead. Um, now it's really moving on. It, it raises the question, why? Why would God care to save us from that? Why would he come in and why does that make a big big difference, right? Well, the reason is, the answer to the question is his loving kindness. He is kind towards us. God does not want us floundering in those conditions. He does not want us hurting every day. He doesn't want us dealing with these demons that are on our back every single day. He knows as long as we live in this world, we're going to be kind of, kind of, Tested right. by these by these things, it's called tribulations and trials, and he knows we're going to be here. So that's why he heals because as a because of his kindness. So Romans two four, it, it kind of tells the story or it gives the an insight of why God would do that. Right? It says, "Or do you despise the riches of his kindness, restraint, and patience, not recognizing?" That God's kindness is intended, hear that word, intended, to lead you to repentance. Now, if you've been to church very much and you've been around religious people, and by religious people I don't mean followers of Jesus, I mean legalists that, that pound you over the head with, you must do this, you must not do that, give you a checklist of rules and, and regulations that if you follow these, you're just like Jesus. If you don't do these, you're just like the devil. Well, I'm going to tell you today, all that's a lie. From the pit of hell. There is no checkbox that you have to do more of, okay? Because of God's loving kindness, He made one way for you to get to heaven, and that's Jesus Christ. Period. That's it. So when He says that His kindness was intended to draw people to repentance, what He says is don't threaten people that they're going to go to hell if they don't believe in me. Don't threaten people that they're going to live in torment. Now, just a caveat there I do believe in a place called hell. I do believe people will go there when they die without knowing Jesus. But I also am of the firm belief that that's not going to be convincing enough to make you follow Jesus. If you're following Jesus out of fear, then your love is not perfected, he said. If, you're lo if you love Jesus, you will follow him out of that love, and your, and your faith will be perfected in love, not in fear. God wants us, when he says in his word, to fear him, he says that fear is a reverent respect, not a fear and trembling that he's going to pound us over the head every time we do something wrong. Right. Some people think he's sitting there as a judge, just waiting for you to fall off track again so he can say, see, I told you so. I told you you were worthless. I told you you were garbage. I told you that you didn't deserve anything, that any goodness that I had in me. That's not what God's doing. His kindness draws people. Second Peter 3.15, it says, regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. He's patient so that we come to salvation, just as our dear brother Paul has written to you according to the wisdom given to him. God's patience is intended to draw us in with his kindness to salvation. He's waiting for you today. Maybe you're the one he's waiting for. I don't know. But but I do know that he's waiting. Right. He's waiting for people to come to him. Um, Ephesians 2, uh, 6 through 9. It says, he also raised up, raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens with Christ Jesus. My gosh, when you're saved, he raises you up at that moment. Your, your position is in Jesus, in heaven. You have a new address when you're saved. That, verse 7 says, so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. His grace. God's grace, unmerited towards us. We don't deserve it. We couldn't work enough, Zach, to, to earn it. All the checkboxes in the world won't, won't get grace, won't earn God's grace. Uh, verse 8 said, For you are saved by grace through faith. Through faith, not through fear. Not through fear, not through much talking, not through anything other than you believing 
in Jesus Christ, and God gives you his grace at that moment. And this is not from yourselves, it, it says. It's a gift. Oh my gosh, a gift from God. There, there's a, something special about a gift. Yeah. Zach, what makes a gift a gift? Get it freely. Someone gives it to you freely. Get it freely. So if I hand this over to you, and you take it, it's no longer mine. Nope. I gave it freely as a gift. That's what God holds his hand out with salvation. And he says, it's yours if you take it. Now, it can sit there, and it can be beautiful. It can be the most precious gift in the world. But until you reach out and take it, it's just that. It's just sitting there. When you take it, it becomes yours. You transfer possession, and it's yours. God doesn't come and say, I want it back. God is not, uh, not a taker of his gifts. He's a giver of his gifts. And then verse 9 of that same, of Ephesians 2, uh, verse 9 says, Not from works, so that no one can boast. I can't brag about my position with God because He created my position with Him. He gave me His grace through my faith. He gave me His grace. He gave me my position. So I can't come to Zach and say, You know what? My position is so much better than yours. You won't believe what I've done today, Zach. I have done. Listen. I have I've checked off every box today, Zach. Oh yeah? Yeah. God's okay. happy with me today. Right. That's no. not true. That's absolutely not true. It, God gave it freely. It's not for me to boast. He gave the same gift to Zachary. He'll give the same gift to you. We have the same position. When we get to heaven, there's not going to be a hierarchy of who did the most stuff all the way down. It's just going to be us, the saints, praising God forever and ever. Man, that's beautiful. And then Romans 3.10 tells us that, that as it is written, there is none righteous, not even one. So what that tells me is that in my condition, I wasn't clean enough to come to God. I wasn't good enough to come to God. I, I Listen, I still have days where I struggle uh, with sin and with, with things that just uh, fret and worry, all these things. I still struggle with those things. When you come to Jesus, you'll still struggle with those things. He says there's none righteous, no, not one. What he means is there's no one on the face of this earth that deserves his grace. And that's why it's called a gift. Right. He gives it freely. He gives it freely. We don't deserve it. We can't earn it. And I'm going to tell you today that if you're saved, he won't take it away. Some people will tell you that you can lose your faith. That you can lose your faith. The Bible clearly says if you were to lose your faith today, you could never come back because you would have to have another sacrifice for your sin because Jesus has already died on the cross for your sin and he gave up his life for the sin you came. So if you lost your faith, there would be no way to come back. So God says you're eternally saved. You're locked in the hand of the Father. Jesus says what the Father puts in my hand, no one can remove. Not even the devil himself. Not even this world. You are eternally, forever and always, saved by the precious blood of Jesus. So this morning, I'm just going to recap, Zach. And, and what, a, what a concept. Yeah. What a concept that Jesus loves me so much that he would never turn his back on me. He came to me when I didn't, didn't deserve it. Still don't deserve it but he gave it freely. So we've all sinned and we deserve God's judgment. Um, but God the Father, in his kindness, in his kindness, he sent Jesus uh, to satisfy the judgment on the cross. And Jesus died on that cross for my sin and your sin. He was buried. He rose from the dead. The Bible tells me that, and I believe it in faith. He rose from the dead. If you truly believe and trust Jesus in your heart and you receive him as your Lord and Savior, declaring that Jesus is Lord, my goodness, that verse, that just that word, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is not Lord over my life. Jesus is not Lord over this or that. He is Lord over everything. There's not one thing that he's not Lord over. If that's what you can say today, that Lord, I want you to be my guiding shepherd, I want you to be my Savior and my Lord. Jesus, please, if that's you today, you will be saved from judgment and you will spend eternity with God in heaven. Is that you? 
I just want to pray for you real quick. Heavenly Father, I pray for the one out there this morning struggling, God, to, to hear your voice. They've heard the chaos. But God, I pray that you would let them hear your voice this morning. They could come to you in faith, knowing that they don't deserve what you're going to give, knowing that they don't deserve any good thing from you, God, but you are the, the, the God and the giver of perfect gifts. God, I pray in your grace this morning that you would bestow upon them salvation. God, let them come to you and declare that Jesus is Lord and Lord over all. In your name we pray. Amen. Now I'm just going to close it with John 15. John 15, 9. Jesus says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. That word abide means just to dwell, to live, to stay in my love. Jesus loves you that much this morning. Uh, before we end, we still have three Bibles. Just like Dad was saying and talking today about uh, the gift of salvation, these three things are a gift. They're completely free. All you have to do Email us at pastorcaven at gmail.com. We'll leave that in the description. Email us, get in contact with us, and we'll figure out a way to send you these. They're CSB compact Bibles. They have It's the whole Bible. You can fit it in a purse, a book bag. It's great for taking anywhere just so you can read the Bible. Absolutely. Contact us, and we'll try to get this to you. But other than that, I have nothing else to say. All right. Well, I'm Pastor Caven. I'm this Zach. This is Zach. And we're KingdomCast.